A man whose mission is to help River Rouge families and families all across the metro area that are struggling to make ends meet, especially when it comes to putting food on the table. Every Wednesday, Terrence Wheeler, along with his team of volunteers, are outside of Ann Visker Preparatory Academy in River Rouge with his mobile food pantry that he coins a pantry of hope. And it truly is. I had the opportunity myself to volunteer. Terrence joins us this morning. And Terrence, you're depicting one thing that you told me that this is every Wednesday, rain or shine, no matter the weather, you are out there. Good morning. Good morning, Rhonda. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing well. Give us some perspective of the need and how this all came about two and a half years ago. Well, you know, talking to young people and you realize that, you know, food, food is, is, is really a necessity and young kids didn't have uh, what I thought they needed. Uh, when kids are at home, other family members are there. Uh, food becomes so important uh, to families, but you know it's a temporary economic uh, uh, decline in families, and so therefore we just wanted to be able to provide some reprieve. So myself and the superintendent drove around to uh, our kids' houses and started to realize that the need was even greater. Uh, made a contact with Kurt Mays over at Forgotten Harvest, uh, formulated a partnership for every Wednesday for the last two and a half years. We've been out here rain, see the snow, it doesn't matter because our hunger is real. I mean, and I know that this food pantry has uh, made an indelible impact in this particular community because it already was uh, a, a, a pandemic of poverty long before the coronavirus hit. And so people are struggling. People are trying to make ends meet. Food prices are high. One person's recession is another person's depression. And so if we can provide some reprieve for families. Uh, we've done our best. And it is some reprieve. You're talking about enough food to feed a family for a week. Now talk about for folks that are seeing this, how can we get involved? How can we help? What partnerships are out there that we can help connect? Well, I think a lot of things is just the basic needs rather than the toiletries. I mean, uh, young people need socks, they need belts, mm -hmm. uh, they need hats, they need gloves uh, because of the, you know, obviously the winter weather is coming. We have to do a better job of providing those resources for our young people. When a young person gets to school, they've done their job. Mm -hmm. um, the success is predicated on adult participation. What are we going to do to make sure that child crosses the finish line? What skin do we have in the game? It is imperative that we engage our young people. We give them every opportunity to be successful. And food is just a source, but it also doesn't show up on your, on your meat test that this kid is hungry. Mm -hmm. This kid doesn't have what they need to get to school. So you want better grades, you want a better student, give them the resources they need to be successful. Right, and you talked about the school has to be more than just a place of education. You really need to understand the needs of the community and of the families and of the children's and meet those needs that you call wraparound services. Absolutely. I think one of the great things we've done here at River Rouge School District is to be able to develop a relationship with a young person. If they trust you, they'll tell you what's going on in their life. And see, once you get to know what's going on in life, then you as an adult have to get engaged. If you, can, if you don't know them, you can't serve them. Mm -hmm. You've got to get to know these young people, figure out what the gaps are, close the gaps, and so these children can receive a translation of education. And so if we have families that are watching right now that say, you know what, we're going to collect those toiletries, those socks, those scars for kids, and we want to bring them out. Should they come on an early Wednesday morning? How would they go about helping to make those donations happen? They can give me a call at 313-205-9826. They don't even have to come to us. I'll go to them mm. because at the end of the day, if someone's trying to help you, you got to make it easier. It's all about eliminating barriers, Rhonda, to education, eliminating barriers for our family. Not only have we this pantry help our community, our school, it's also helped our staff members because the face, of the, the face of poverty is no longer the, the bum on the street. It's the working poor. It is that person that makes too much money to get help, not enough to survive. So we as a people need to go to Congress and figure out how to uh, extend these poverty guidelines. They're too low. The poverty guidelines just start around 40, 50,000 a year because families are struggling. Mm -hmm. Inflation is here. Have you been to the grocery store? Eggs are up. Everything costs. A bag of Doritos is two dollars and fifty cents. Mm -hmm. So imagine it with a family who's struggling. They need help. Absolutely. No one should be hungry in this country. No one should be hungry in this mm -hmm. country.
your passion is just incredible and your passion is purpose because you have done so much to help that community and it goes well beyond River Rouge. Anybody in the Metro Detroit area that can get to that mobile food pantry every week it will be served. So Terrence, thank you for all that you're doing. We will have the information on our website. In fact, we do right now if you search this story for the number that Terrence provided if you want to get involved and help. So big thanks to Terrence and all the volunteers that are out there every week making sure that that mobile food pantry keeps going.